The fate of the Furious is revving its way into theaters, but do we have love or hate for the Furious? <laughs> Find out right now on Screen Junkies News. All right, team, listen up. This crew is about family, but the game has changed now. Hi, I'm Dan Merle. And I'm Roth Cornett. And we are here with your review for the eighth movie in the Fast and the Furious franchise, The Fate of the Furious. And can I say right off the bat that it is a huge missed opportunity that it is not spelled F8 of the Furious. I am pretty shocked, actually, that they did not roll right into that they ever. Did not. I didn't see much of that at all. That's the only example of restraint that this franchise has ever shown, <laughs> not just spelling it on everything as the F8 of the Furious. Well, I would say that one of the things that the franchise has going for it is normally its total lack of restraint or yes. adherence to the raw laws of logic or physics. That's one of the things that those who enjoy it, which we should say up front, for the most part, I stand on the team of that I enjoy the Fast and the Furious franchise. You, not so much. Not so much. I think that Fast Five is a, is fun. I like it. I like it. It's a fun heist movie. Uh, that's definitely by, by far the, the, the one that I've enjoyed the most. But the re I would say generally, yeah, the rest of the Fast and the Furious movies are not things that I enjoy for a varying number of reasons. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not as big of a fan of the franchise as you are. No, and which leads me to where do you land on this movie? I dislike this movie, but for different reasons than I dislike the other movies, if that makes any sense. It does make sense because I think that this is a film that Fast and the Furious fans might mm -hmm. have some questions about. Now, it certainly delivers on a number of things that we expect from this franchise. Yeah. There are big epic set pieces. There is a great car chase at the end that is absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it. You did it. <laughs> Dan's utter disappointment <laughs> in me only mirrors his utter disappointment, I think, in this, movie. In this film. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it delivers that. You have the relationships, the idea of the family, obviously carries through. They do a, say family a lot in this movie. And they carry it through actually even in a larger way here. You get into some of the ideas of extended family and things like that. Continuation mm -hmm. of the family. And you you do have the fun, right? The fun is in there. There are some comedic moments. There's a sequence with Jason Statham in this movie that is one of my favorite sequences in the franchise in total and probably one of my favorite Jason Statham sequences in total. Can, I, can we just agree that maybe if they just has spun everyone out of this franchise and it was just The Rock and Jason Statham that these would be much better movies well, at this point. They're talking about a spinoff with The Rock, but that's a whole Great. other topic. Here's, here's where I think it, this one gets a little interesting for me. Yeah. They, F. Gary Gray wanted, and Vin Diesel wanted to do something different here. And I think they did want to take it to a more sort of grounded place in some aspects. What's tricky about that is that you still have to deliver a Fast and Furious movie. Yeah. So there are times that it does feel like there are two separate movies going on. One with Vin Diesel and Charlize Theron, and it is pretty dark in moments. They uh, Extraordinarily dark. They yeah. take it to places that even for any movie, I'm just like, okay, this is a different volume for this franchise. <laughs> exactly. They take it to a place in one particular moment that I think was out of alignment with what I'm looking for. and the feeling experience I mm -hmm. want watching these movies because it does in a way ground it mm -hmm. emotionally almost too much so that when I'm in these big epic action chase sequences, suddenly I'm thinking things that I never want to think when I'm watching these, like how many people would die in all of these car crashes and just the pure carnage. Yeah. But in reality, I want to feel like I'm watching Roadrunner where there are no consequences, nothing matters, you can fall off the cliff, Wally yeah. Coyote, and you're coming right back. Well, and that's what got me the most, I think, and when I say that I have problems with this movie for different reasons than I did the rest of them is I, there's a darkness to this movie and you know if you've seen the trailers and if you want to go I don't know why you're watching this review if you want to go in completely fresh because but if, this is not a spoiler because this is very much indicated in the trailers but Dom is for reasons known in the movie but unknown right now so we won't say them uh, pitted against the family. his family his team uh, and I think that's part of what I have issues with, which is that the rest of the Fast and the Furious movies are movies that I don't particularly enjoy, but I, I understand why people like them. And they did, I could recognize that they have this goofy kind of, of, of 
the actors are having a good time doing it. I think that the directors were having a good time making it. They knew that they were making these kind of stupid action movies. I think Vin Diesel take us too seriously, but I don't think anyone else really did. And that they had that kind of charm to them where, you know, even though, you know, and, and even in Fury 7 where you got into the heaviness of addressing what happened yeah. with Paul Walker, that wasn't the entire movie. The movie was Paul Walker and Vin Diesel jumping across buildings in a car. And, yes. you know, and even if these are things that I don't particularly connect to, I got why people enjoyed these movies so much in the sense of family. And I think there's such a disconnect in this movie from that. I think that you you don't have Paul Walker and that character of Brian was, you know, uh, uh, such a, a big part of the franchise and, and also by extension, Jordana Brewster. And there was that part and that's removed from the film, you know, unfortunately just due to the tragic circumstances of what happened with Paul Walker. So you lose that. And then the first one out, you now have Dom against everybody. It, it, Vin Diesel was always that mumbly crazy man that kept them all together. He was the one that when the team was going to split apart, would mumble something about family and they would all come back together. Yeah, he was like, when we talked about the, which we will be doing here on Screen Junkies News, the Fast and the Furious family tree, our yeah. producer Jordan um, suggested that he was like the grandmother, like he's the yes. abuela. He's the holding, matriarch. He's of the, the matriarch the holding family. it all together. Yes. And then Paul Walker is actually like the mom, you know? She, right. He, and you do. I I have to agree with you. I felt him missing. I felt Brian's absence in this movie in a way that, yeah, it, 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 a key element to what makes this work was no longer there. And there was a character there that very clearly they're trying to sub in for Brian no. and it didn't work. And as a fan of the franchise, I, I found myself having these, you're not my dad moments with this character that yeah. was completely irrational where I sort of resented his inclusion because it was so obvious to me that he was supposed to be subbing in for Brian. Yeah, and, and I also felt like they just went way too, again, Fast and Furious always seemed like a franchise that stumbled into success. They weren't supposed to. They did that reboot. It wasn't supposed to work. They added The Rock and Five. All of a sudden, they made a lot of money. They've kind of gone through that. Like, I don't think they expected to do this, and so they kind of carried that thing of just like, kind of like the kids that got the dad's car keys yeah. and so like they were doing crazy stuff jumping off of cliffs and things and when he grabs Michelle Rodriguez jumping over the highway like they were always so over the top yeah and the action in this movie while the set pieces were grand the action felt to me so generic and so bland and so not that kind of ridiculous jumping across buildings thing that you see yeah. in Furious 7, just that heightened reality. Mm -hmm. This to me just felt like so much noise and sound. And you said that like you have to disregard, to be a Fast Furious fan, you have to disregard the physics and stuff. Yeah. I get, but like to, to get into this movie, you had to disregard physics, math, how fire works, how magnets work. Like you had to just disconnect yourself from all reality completely. And even in, it was to, even in these movies, and I've conditioned myself to, to have to know what to expect. Even in these movies, I was sitting there thinking like, that is too stupid for a Fast and the Furious movie. Even grading on a curve, that is too stupid. That's interesting. I think it's not stupid enough. Here, like, cause I think that the, mo because the moments that I really love in this movie, and it, mm -hmm. it does, I wanna be clear. I don't hate this movie, I'm a Fast and the Furious fan, you will still enjoy it if you were a Fast and the Furious fan, and it delivers some of some of my favorite sequences in the franchise overall, but a large chunk in the middle is um, weighted down by a storyline that feels out of place with this franchise. Mm -hmm. It feels too heavy and too dark. The villain here, Charlize Theron, um, is not having any fun as be in being a Fast and the Furious villain, right. which is too bad because Helen Mirren comes in for just a couple of scenes and She's nails it. She is having a blast. She totally gets what movie she is in. And I'm thinking if that was the main villain the whole time, I would be so on board with this yeah. movie. And Helen Mirren, I think, was one of the only few. Jason Statham seemed like he was probably having a good time. The Rock always seems like he's having a good time. Yeah. That's why I kind of wish they would suspend these two characters off because this was the first Fast and Furious movie that, whether I liked it or not, I, th I did not get that sense from the main cast, from the, the, the original Fast and Furious cast. I got no sense from any of them right. that they were having a good time making this movie. And that's something that I recognized even in the movies that I didn't like. This seemed to me like they were just there for another sequel. And so so many ways it seemed to me that the heart 
kind of went out of this franchise in this movie. I would agree with you. And I think that you make a very key point there that in this movie in particular, with the loss of Brian, Dom needed to be even more bringing the family together. He mm-hmm. really even me- more needed to step into that role. And it did fracture the tone and it did fracture the film a little bit. Um, Tyrese certainly stepped up with the comedy. I do think some of them were having fun with this movie. And again, The Rock, Jason Statham, Helen Mirren, great high points, some great set pieces, really weird ideas of how to do car chases. But to your point earlier, I don't think that they need to be more realistic in those. I think they need to be as unrealistic as they have been previously and say, hey, let's pretend we're playing hot cars and literally we can do anything. What should we jump out of next? So Roth, bottom line, would you recommend this movie? Oh gosh, I do recommend this movie for fast fans, but I caution you that it will not entirely deliver what you have come to like and enjoy about this escapist, purely escapist franchise. I thought this movie was aggressively stupid. It's not one that I enjoyed, but that's nothing new. I will caution, if you're a Fast and the Furious fan, I think even you might think that this is maybe not the best entry in the franchise. So I can't recommend it personally. It's just not something that connected with me. But if you are a Fast and the Furious fan, if you're an action movie fan, and if you want to just go below dumb, and it really just be, see spectacle just on the ag- screen. I can't disagree with you more. It needs to be more dumb than I, it is. I can't imagine the movie <laughs> being any dumber than this one it is. It should but hey, be more dumb. I Wait, guess we'll find hey, out. When you guys uh, leave your comments, if you do see the film, let us know whether you think it needed to be more or less dumb. Um, I'm assuming most of the comments coming to me are going to be that you've lost all credibility. I will never listen to you again because you enjoy the escapist joy yes. of the Fast and the Furious. No, these are not Oscar winning movies. These are not Oscar bait movies. And that I think is the key takeaway here. They never should be structured as such. They should always be structured as pure roadrunner, good old time, car chasing through tanks, fun. And I don't think you have to make a choice. I'm Dan Merle. Oh, I'm Roth Gornett. Thanks for watching our review of Fast of Fast 8, Fate of the Furious. And if you want to see anything else from us here at Screen Junkies News, click around. I'm sure we are got some things floating around somewhere on the screen. I don't know. They're somewhere in the ether. Uh, we're reviewing the latest movies. We always have the latest movie news right here for you. Thanks for watching. Until next time.